something, you know, basically, I mean, I've been a, a meditator, a yoga practitioner uh, for most of my life. And it's through that that I became political. Because, because what I realized is, you know, and, and I think it's so beautiful when, the, uh, when America declared its independence. In fact, I'd like to read uh, something to you from that. You know, I think it's, to me, every time I read this, I get goosebumps, you know. And um, let's see here. Yeah, here, here, this is, this is what they said. This is why they declared independence, you know? And they said, and, and America, America actually, I'm actually not an American even though I sound like one, you know? <laughs> but, um, but, you know, and America's really proud of this. But, and, and, but America's lost its way. And just let me read this to you. They said, they said when they declared independence from, from Britain, they said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator, nature itself, the creator, nature itself, with certain unalienable rights, you know, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, these are unalienable rights. These are rights that you cannot take away from anybody, you know, the right to life, liberty, to, to live, to right to be alive, to be free, and to pursue what makes you happy. I mean, what a great life that is. Unhampered, unfettered, you know? And, and, and that to secure these rights, to secure these rights, governments are instituted amongst men. We, we have governments to secure that. Is that what our governments are doing today? You know? And, and deriving, and the governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. Where, do they, where does the government get its power? From us. Right? And then they say that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to that, to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Right? and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall most likely to affect their safety and happiness. You know, so, so, so if that is, you know, to me, I think that's a pretty good definition of what's going on. I mean, to me, that's, that, that, it says it to me, and I get goosebumps every time I read it, and I like to read it from time to time. And if I look at the current situation, you go like I don't I don't think I don't think they're doing that right now, and so so it made me question like how did we get there? What happened? And and as I began to look into it, and um, I've been living in Ireland now for about seven years, as I began to try to understand what happened, um, I, I and I and I basically looked at the um, that the original constitution of the Irish Free State, right, and. Um, and as I began to look into it, I realized that that original constitution gave the Irish people referendum powers. Which meant that, that all the people of Ireland in the original constitution had the right to step in and throw out any law created by the government that didn't suit them. Because, because when, when you live in tyranny for so long like the Irish people have, and you had your revolution and you resisted the crown, right? You became the sovereign. That's what a democracy is. Every single person in the country is a small piece, a small part of a larger body that's the sovereign. That power used to be assumed by the kings and the queens. But now, when you fought the revolution, you said, no, we're the sovereign, right? That's, that's what we are. We are the sovereign. And all power, we have all powers, all rights. And what did we do? We created a constitution so that we could have representatives carry out our business for us. Because we felt we can take care of all of our wealth, all of the, the business of our nation as one big group. Why don't we just get some people to represent us? And that's, that's who our public servants are.
But what they did, they went great. You know, at the beginning they were all sincere, but then all of a sudden they go like, hey, look at all this power. So what did they do? They started dismantling the connection between you and them more and more and more and assuming more power for themselves, right? And the way they did that in Ireland was the original constitution had Article 47 and 48 in it, which gave you the right to organize referendum, which meant that you could step in any time when the government did something that you did not like, you do not like, and throw it out through referendum. And it meant, it meant that you had the power to do that. Now what you have today, you still have referendum power, but what the government did is it assumed that power for themselves. In other words, before that power was only with the people. The people, you know, so, so if you're a manager and you got people working for you, you're not going to wait every five years to uh, to adjust what they're doing. You want to, if a, as a manager, you go, hey, you're not doing the you're not doing the job right. Let me just step in and correct you. And if you don't do it right, I'm going to throw you out and put somebody else in the position, right? So what they've done since the beginning of the Irish Free State, they've slowly dismantled your ability to step in and and change things. Now the original Constitution, I mean, after living in tyranny for so long. You know, the, 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 the constitutional framers, they, they went out and they looked at the best parts of all the constitutions and they made a beautiful, a perfect constitution for you. Now the, now the people who were in the first Erectus, they went like, hey, the people have too much power. Let's, um, let's, let's change this a bit. And they had the right to do that in Article 50. It said like, okay, this is our first constitution. You guys are the first Erectus. You guys have the power to, to, uh, to modify it. And, and so what did they do? They basically threw out your ability to, to question authority and assume more power for themselves, right? And so you fast forward today, here we are, right? So, so how could they stick a big banking debt on our heads, you know? How could they, uh, uh, whenever we have a referendum, say, no, you voted the wrong way, and, uh, and let's have another one until you vote it the right way, and um, the way we want you to vote. And by the way, when you vote it, it doesn't become law. But when you vote again and you vote the way we want it, it's law and it can't be changed anymore. You know, so that's an absolute total manipulation, right? And so, and so why, 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 why did they do that? Why did they, why did they disconnect us from, from power? Why did they disconnect us from the ability to, to be able to affect the outcome? These people work for us. They create laws. We go, great, those are great laws. Let's just continue living, enjoying ourselves. Oh, they created a law that's oppressive. We don't like it. It's too expensive. It makes us unhappy. Let's just step in, have a referendum, throw it out. Why did they disconnect us from that? What? I think you have to also factor in that you, you put the American example, and it's a good analogy. You have to factor in the fact that the Crown never did leave either Ireland or America, that they were always there in the background, invisible to the ordinary people, working their, their way through the corporations. Absolutely. In fact, a lot of that wealth of all the original banker families is hidden very much in all kinds of shell companies and all kinds of corporations. You're right. The, um, so, so, um, so, so the reason that they wanted to disconnect you from the ability to step in is because if you're a politician, see like for example, the, one of the problems with a politician is that, that they want to get reelected. So if, to get reelected, you have to, you know, uh, you have to be able to create jobs because everybody wants to buy their houses and have their families and, and do what they want to do. And if you can't provide jobs, people are gonna get disgruntled and you probably won't stay in power very long, right? So, so it means that if you want to have jobs in a country, you have to then get together with corporations, multinationals, uh, large investment firms, to develop the infrastructure of your, com uh, of your country. So that means that by, by, by default, that politicians are always going to be dealing with, with heads of uh, large companies, uh, large interests, the elite. So, so if, if you still had democratic powers, you know, and the thing about big multinational uh, corporations that so they go like, well, I need to make an investment. I want to make sure that I can make a good return on my investment. So how can you guarantee me that I can have a good return on my investment? Well, you know, I, oh, sure, I'll, I'll develop your oil fields if you give me a great price on it. I'll, do, I'll develop your gas. You know, I'll develop this. I'll create that. But I want to make a big profit on it. 
so so the so the uh, government officials realized that that um, by disconnecting us from referendum power, you know, and not having the ability to step in, it meant that they could really do any deal that they wanted, and we wouldn't have an ability to step in and throw it out. So you can guarantee those who would be investing in your in your in your country, who, who would be developing your infrastructure, that um, that that it wouldn't be interfered with, right? So uh, so. Uh, so, so if you fast forward then and you come to today, you basically had, you know, th this is what I find so interesting. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not an Irish uh, citizen, you can hear that by the accent, I'm sure, right? And um, please don't hold it against me, you know. But, um, but you know, like when, when the banking fiasco first started, you know, and I was listening to the radio, you know, how did they, how did they frame it? How did they frame it? They said it was, you know, Ireland was defaulting on its debts. This is when it was still a private corporation that was defaulting on its debt. You know, the 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 the, the Anglo uh, Irish Bank. You know, they they they, they were like uh, they were going like, oh look at Ireland. You know, we're going to be embarrassed. You know, we have to pay our debts. You know, what are the people going to think about Ireland? You know, uh, what a disaster. We need to step in and we need to fix the banking system. They said all these things, right? And and I and I thought to myself, how can they say that? Because this is a private corporation, right? And then I thought about it some more and I thought like, oh, well, I guess this is the only part of Ireland that really matters, the elite, right? The only thing that really matters is the elite. Because if it's a private corporation that's failing and, and, and publicly and all the airwaves, the radio, the television, they're talking about it as being an Irish problem. Then I thought, well, well, the only part of Ireland that matters is the elite, right? And I, and I went like, no, there's lots of ways to do this. You don't have to do it the way that they're, that they're spinning it, you know? And, um, and so, of course, what did you get? What did you get? You got, like, uh, you got a government that was running large deficits, uh, borrowing more money to bail out a bunch of bankers who were going to supposedly make money available during these hard times so that everybody could get it together. The last time I, I checked, I was talking to a lawyer. He said there's 30% of the lawyers are unemployed. And he said if, you, if, if the banks aren't giving any money to anybody. So, if, if so, so you basically need to survive on your own cash because they're not going to give you any, right? So basically, we got hoodwinked, you know? And, and they lied to us, right? They, they said, no, it's one billion. I was saying it's only one billion. Then it was two, then it was three, then it was five, then it was 10, then it was 15, and then it was 80, right? 80. Now, Huh? 80. Yeah. And, 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 and since when, and, and since when uh, did a bank not, a, was, since when was a bank not able to do proper accounting? They know, they know to the penny what I owe them, what I have, right? Right? So, so how is it possible? They just lied to us. They manipulated us. They cheated us. And they screwed us, right? And why did they do that? Why did they do that? Well, first of all, one of the things that, um, that if you look at the the list of um, of senior bondholders in the in the Anglo Irish Bank, um, you will see that that they're really large investment firms. And if you analyze them a little bit more, you can see that they're worth about, in terms of the investments that they're making, about 20 trillion. So 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 in other words, like if you just look at their assets on paper, what you can figure out, it's about worth 20 trillion. So basically. Uh, the uh, the assets of the Irish people are, are a lot, but but a hundredth of that, right? So you got you got people with a hundredth of the assets of the the people of the, the the people who have 20 trillion bailing them out, right? So why do they do that? Well, they know this. See, they know this. They know that that um, that uh, that 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 we're going to default. They already know this, right? See, they know that. They already know we're going to default. And when we def well, and, and in order to get up the loan, uh, get the loans to uh, to bail us out, the Central Bank of Ireland had to put up the assets of Ireland as collateral. So it means that they already know that we're going to default. So when we default, guess what's going to happen? Big fire sale. Everything they're going to privatize everything. All your wealth. See, they actually put up your wealth as a as a guarantee for the loan package, right? And so they're going to sell everything. They're going to privatize everything. And what are they really doing? What they're doing is it's the biggest scam of history. It is completely. But they've been doing this a lot. They, this is money. Yeah, they, they've been doing this a lot. They haven't done. They've done this before in other countries and other places. Because guess who the big, big, um, the big uh, consultant was to the government? Guess who it was? Morgan. And M. Rothschild. 